off. It's controversial. <laughs> Having that guy around is the, the best thing that ever happened to the squad. If you have the right mix of autism and steroids, all these pundits and whatnot, a lot of people doubting me, you know. I don't want to fucking have a conversation while I'm sharing, you know, like, the hobby I do is already so gay. You are now listening to the El Segundo podcast with Craig Jones. Guys, B Team is now live on Submeta. So you guys are gonna have instructors uh, like myself, obviously, Nikki Rod, Nikki Ryan, and unfortunately Ethan Kralenstein as well. This won't be the typical stuff we put on BGJ Fanatics. So obviously we'll still have instructional portions where we obviously go over in detail certain techniques, but we'll be providing something different. We'll have narrated rolling. So you see roles between uh, each of the high level guys where we both narrate the role from our own perspective and sort of cover important details in there. It might be the whole role or it might be just one sequence that occurred during that round. We're gonna have Q and A's. So for now, the students are asking us questions and we're gonna answer those questions for you guys on Submeta. But obviously down the line, we plan to open these questions up on platforms like uh, Reddit, Instagram, you guys will send the questions, but obviously you'd have to be a member to get those answers. We'll also feature the techniques we teach in the class, right? So obviously B Team, very popular around the world. Not everyone can afford to travel to expensive ass Austin to train here. So this will kind of give you a kind of behind the scenes feel as if you're participating in these classes. You really see how the day to day runs. Uh, this is a better format for sub meta. Obviously we couldn't put this, all this bullshit on YouTube. Uh, it's too long. There's going to be so much content on here. Uh, again, slightly different look to BGJ Fanatics, but it, it'll be uh, very interesting nonetheless. Again, you guys know Submeta through Lachlan Giles. If you don't, now you do know he's on there. That's his own private website. Uh, we'll be using the same platform. So if you just Google B Team Submeta, it'll pop up. But also, if you're on the regular Submeta page with Lachlan Giles, you should be able to find a pretty easy tab to look over. To B team. So again, for now, it's just Lachlan Giles and we're the first team breaking in to this new platform. The platform's incredible. He's done a real good job using developers. Uh, really easy to use system and it's going to be very, very cheap. Get on there, guys. Live right now. All right, we're here. We're going to start it off because you actually, uh, you actually brought this up. You were telling me about the absolute disgust and hatred you have towards Australians that comes all the way to Texas and train a new way, but <laughs> That seems to be your, uh, your thoughts. Um, well, let's start. We won't say his name, but uh, he is your student. And you've done a lot for him. You coach him, you help him, you do all these things for him. And then he goes, trains with your arch nemesis, uh, fake PhD professor in Texas. And with Gordon, who attacks you online every day. <laughs> And then he fucking gets on his knees for Gordon, you know? It's a bit of an interesting thing with that man. Cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. We've got people that have trained at both. And yeah. Yeah, some people have gone to B team. Some have gone to New Wave. Fair. My plan is to have a match. I want to find out who's going to win, you know? Put it, the Australians that go to B team against the Australians that go to New Wave and... Well, we actually already did it. Uh, I believe one Declan Moody did have a victory at New Wave headquarters, submitting him. I remember, I think they had a match pre the guy's time at New Wave and Declan didn't submit him. So under your tutelage, it was a points or a decision match. He goes to New Wave, gets submitted immediately by Declan Moody. How do you feel about that? Must just mean that my tutelage is. <laughs> yeah. That's one match, yes. We'll love. Uh... I mean, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just... what else is there? I mean, it's all right. So in my... I, feel like you, I feel like both teams will get offended if I set up a, a match in, in Australia. S yeah. To be honest, uh, some people are at New Wave that we have kicked out. Yeah. And they're also absolute students as well. Yeah. I would say that we have a vastly different um, line. You know, like if someone crosses the line, they're out of B team. But I feel like you're you're very 
Me. You operate kind of like a church-like environment, you know. You, uh, you want to help people grow, become better people. <laughs> like almost like a cult-like environment, you know. A cult? Well, a cult, you, you take in the the wounded, you know what I mean? The oh, spiritually I wounded. Just generous, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. So you allow, allow them to fuck up a few times or well, uh, out of the... Not necessarily. My experience as a co like running a gym has been if usually if someone messes up once and you give them a second chance, you usually regret it. Oh, yes. yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It'll happen again. Yeah, that's generally been the case. But yeah, the worst part of opening a gym for me was the realization that every single thing that you think would be normal behavior needs to be written down and put on the wall in front of whatever thing that happens you know what i mean yeah yeah it's um common sense is not so common yeah using like shoes if someone doesn't put their shoes on in the bathroom and goes back to the mat bang they're out of there is that a band lifestyle band no they, they don't know that how could you not know that though? i don't know some people haven't been to gyms before maybe in their, at their house they do that i don't know <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what other things we kick people out for anything hey like if they who does the kicking out do you do it I don't do it no. but I, so you just you get to decide and then you well sometimes uh, sometimes it's kind of like survivor you know what I mean we have the five coaches the five owners and we all take a vote on it you know yeah but but who does the dirty work well, I mean, we pay someone to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to... i got to be the good guy. <laughs> I absolutely have to be the good guy there. Is it the guy behind the camera? <laughs> to maintain good relationships with the students, you know? Right, so you get to be on the good terms, but you kick them out. Well, I don't speak to them usually at all, you know? Like, I try to avoid most communication with the members. Sure. It's difficult, you know? Like, you, I remember you telling me, you're like, man, I don't remember half these fucking people's names. You know, you used to tell me that all the time. Yeah. How do you overcome that? just don't remember everyone's <laughs> names <laughs> yeah it's too hard i mean if, if you when you got a smaller gym you know you can know everyone but like when it gets bigger you can't it's just well i'm scared to you. especially if, like i'm introverted so like i don't know i think I'm, my, my social circle is meant to be small <laughs> sounds like an excuse so i'm scared now because i used to just say bro or whatever but now like you might, you know you might be misgendering it might be getting in trouble for that you know so like what is the they them generic term I don't know. You're in the US. You've got to deal with that. Oh, US. Melbourne's way worse. <laughs> Melbourne's fucking wild for that stuff. You don't think? I don't know. I can't say the things I say in Texas and Melbourne. I fucking Texas might be different. Getting a know. bit of trouble over there. So, what what do you think of the different um, training methodologies? So people, I've like people I've spoken to who went to New Wave. They do like almost an hour of Apparently, John will teach just techniques for like an hour. Um, and then they'll do just positional training, no no rolling. Oh, well, that's... Uh, that, that might be the mat size. That's limited like, based on mat size, I think, because Henzo Gracie Austin, where they uh, teach the um, the regular people, or some of the people in there are good, John just doesn't like them, doesn't allow them to come to Roka, you know? But, but every day is basically like a seminar. Like, it's like a lot of... Um, that started in Puerto, Puerto Rico because in New York we would do all right so everyone knows this but class was meant to start at 12 but it started at 12 45 you know mm -hmm. and then we would do only three four maximum five techniques and if people haven't been in his class he's pretty succinct as opposed to the length of his instructionals yeah. you know what he says in class uh, could be a hundred times shorter than the way he expresses it in an instructional but we would only do a short amount. We'd do three positions, three regular. And if there was a comp coming up, maybe an extra round at the end yep. pertaining to those rules. And then in Puerto Rico, but that was because we were in Hens operating under Henzo Gracie. So he, although he could start foot class 45 minutes late, that was about the limit. And then he couldn't have run class too late because that space, mm -hmm. he's, he's teaching within Henzo's gym. Puerto Rico, the rules were completely gone. So like... We went back to one session a day, but sometimes we'd do over two hours of technique before we'd roll. You know, like he would just... How did you find that? Oh, that was awful, yeah. 
That was awful. We start because when we went there, he wanted to teach all the locals, catch them up to speed on leg locks. So it'd be a lot of static drilling on that. Uh, and um, it's funny because it's rough. Yeah, I run like the pro classes. I run. Uh, I tend to like. I kind of want people to do their homework, like you know, knowing what technique you want to work on and so on is uh, like a. I suppose I just view it a bit differently, but like. Yeah, you could you could sit there and watch instructionals and come in like knowing what you want to work, and then if you've got an hour and a half, two hours, you can get straight into the training side of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just found it interesting that there's like a lot of technical instruction. Which you know, I was like, oh, isn't that something you could get in your own time? Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, I mean, people that are thinking for themselves are going to be way better than those people that just show up. That's always been my, that's always been my, like you and like, I think about all the guys in Australia that I think progressed fast, even like Kit, Mini Dave, uh, Tingy and so on, who I thought like got good at a faster rate than other people. Um, And even people, that's just people like that, that I came through with, but then people at my gym as well. Like even guys like Jeremy and that, like he would always just be studying his own things. You know, the people who are doing their own study, I think you just, understand like when you're coming in with like i'm going to try this not just i'm going to try what someone said but like i want to work this you do get better faster that's that's the sort of what i'm trying to do in my i like I'm trying to encourage people to to do that but you even can, if it's not if, if they're not that personality it's hard but like yeah you know those are i mean it was someone asked me a question that they could easily figure out the answer to I'm pretty mean to them about it, you know, because it's like, to me, it just shows laziness or like they don't want to think for themselves. They don't want to try it out. So it's like I kind of try to shut it down. That's probably one thing I learned from John, but that's not going to fly in a regular gym, you know? Like if someone's a purple belt and they're like, how do I escape psych control? You're like, bro, fuck, fucking way too far gone now. You know, like it better be a specific question relating to a specific yep. problem. Otherwise, I just think it's super lazy. Or then, like, if they you, they demonstrate it and the problems, the solution's so obvious, you're like, bro, how are you not? Like, you, you haven't even come up with your own idea, tried to test it out. Yeah. You're trying to cut out the middleman and ask me direct. But then that just, to me, shows a lazy personality type that's probably not going to do too well in jiu-jitsu where you face problems yeah. every day. How would you say B-teams training structure is different to like what like if someone was going to new wave compared to b team what what would they expect i mean the classes will be more much more uh encouraging much more self-learning but then like you said like some people just uh, they seem to be incapable of that yeah i mostly just help people that have events somewhat important events coming up like i'll work on specific things with them rather than work with the whole class because i believe like helping them over specific problems for the event they have coming up is actually more helpful to them than them participating in a regular class but the good guys are in the corner practicing what they think they need to work on you know they self-separate yeah some sometimes someone that doesn't belong in that corner comes along we have to whoosh, kick them out you know they're not ready yet but yeah I, um how much do you, uh, so i'm just getting into your, your <laughs> i'm really interviewing you <laughs> um how important do you think working from bad positions is? I was interesting. Like I talked to, I asked Tynan, I was asking Tynan about his um, training and he says like, he gets him mostly working out of bad spots, which I found interesting because I always thought AOJ was all about like first grips, first point, like basically if you pass the guard, you lost sort of oh, thing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of, I kind of viewed them as like the opposite of like, because I heard like how Danaher was training, which was a lot of like mount, side control and back. And I thought like AOJ was almost the opposite. They would, if you were in any of those spots, the match is already decided. And like the real match is decided earlier in the guard pass sweep thing. But it was interesting. That's, that's kind of how I viewed it. But then speaking to Tynan, he, but not everyone at the gym, but like just him and maybe some of the best guys, Gee gets him to work out of bad spots. How important do you think that is? I think that's good psychologically because you realize how bad most people are in good positions and bad positions. Yeah. Like sometimes you see it in a match where the second a guy gets past, he's basically submitted. You're like, oh, he has yeah. no 
offense. We yeah. no defense from here at all. I think it's good psychologically because if you're confident in bad positions, you're always relaxed in the role. Whereas if you think, oh, if I get past, I lose, you generally start to freak out a bit. And that's when I think people make terrible decisions. Yeah, I was thinking about it like also if you're, if you're the best, like if you're the, the person who should, you should win, like no matter what the exchange is, you should win, then the things you need to do to make yourself win more is actually just like now work on like the odd chance that you do get put in a bad spot that you're gonna get out. Cause in the, in the neutral spots, you, you'll probably, you get, you get into those spots enough, you win. So you're only then gonna lose if someone like can take you out of that. Whereas I think like for maybe someone who's just like in amongst the field, but not the best guy in the division, maybe more time needs to be spent on in that kind of mid range, like that, those earlier battles. Cause the, they need to just get in and have, you know, to have a chance at winning just being able to get out a lot for them is not so good. They need to actually like keep upskilling on their ability to take advantage of a good situation. Yeah, I also think it's a fun way to train too, is like just putting yourself in progressively worse and worse positions. You do it a lot more than I do. And see if you can get out, yeah. <laughs> but maybe it's because you're bigger. It's I don't like I don't want to I don't want to do a camp and start under mount. Oh, yeah. yeah but you day. realize how terrible everyone is, you know? Like people are legitimately awful. Most people, you know, it's crazy. You you encounter, I can like 98% of people have one or two things they're good at and nothing else. Yeah. And that's just mind blowing. They're, it's the ultimate blue belt. It's the guy that got good at a Kimura and just kept kimura people over and over again until they got their black belt. That's like what most people are, I think. Well, it's good if you've at least got one good thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what I, that's the way, I mean, when I put myself in bad positions, I realize how bad people are attacking from those positions. You know, you're like, wow, I think it's important mentally to realize that. Like if Tainan's always starting in bad positions, no one could do anything. He feels bulletproof competing, you know, like what's yeah, someone yeah. going to do? Yeah. And that's why Gordon will always do long matches because it's like Tainan, Jensen, well, he got up an advantage on him. Yeah. And then just rode it out. You know, like you can do that in a short match. You can't do that in a longer match. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so you, you definitely get injured more. Every now and then, though, I give someone a good position. Like even at this camp, uh, and someone will do something crazy to me, and I'll be like, I have to be basically Gandhi level of Zen to not just get out <laughs> and just break their leg or something. Hey, if that's the hard part, you know, you have to be like, serenity now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's why I don't do it just because usually at a camp snap. I'll just like try to I mean I do a lot of roll like you know I, pretty, I tried to roll everyone at the camp so for me it was just like if I can just win a little bit and just use the least amount of energy required to just stay ahead but it's what like, a waste of time eh? Nah, no it's fun I think, I think you learn, I feel like I learn if I'm trying to use, like it's a, you're improving your skills if you're trying to do it the most efficient way possible. Like use as little energy as you can to achieve. I feel like that's like a good way to up your skills. Even if it's someone who you could, you know, you could like press, put a lot of pressure on and, and walk through. But if you kind of limit yourself in like very short movements and very, you know, tight, but like minimal energy, I think that's a way to, to improve against someone who you normally could beat. That's a very safe way to do it, right? Yeah. I like to just give them all positions and say, oh, wow, this guy's terrible here. Let me see what highlight real thing I can do to him specifically in that moment, you know? Which yeah. is fun, fun as well, you know, fun. I don't know if they enjoy it as much, you know? Did anyone get injured rolling you during the camp? I popped one guy's elbow, but only he caused it. Because I went for a stupid submission, I went Americana under side control, and he tried to pull back. But like that just puts the, we heard the pop, we'll check out the camera and see how loud it was. He said he already had tennis elbow though, so obviously I'm not liable there, you know, hopefully he signed the waiver. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been sued yet, not yet. Do you can get sued in a role? 
I mean, if, it, if, 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 if you did, someone, what, calls, you Hannah, would... if someone calls Hannah Gracie, who knows what's going to happen, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I suppose if you do something that's considered outside the normal scope. That's the thing. Sometimes I go for Boston crabs and I think, hey, this could break their spine, you know? Yeah. If you're out there, if you're watching this and you want a good payday against Craig, that's your time. That'll be the end of it. The second someone successfully sues a seminar guy, no one's rolling at the seminars <laughs> anymore, right? It's bound to happen, isn't it? I always wonder what they get out of it. Like what, like they want to roll with you. Some people want to test you at the seminar. And then like, basically they just want to touch you, you know, like you're like, cause it's like, it's, it's weird. You know, some people, they try not to get submitted and you're like, man, this is so weird. Like, so you, you get a good feel for the type of person now if they try to kill you. I think they want to like, they want like a measuring stick to some degree. But you can't. Not just that. fit. Yeah, I know, but not just like, not like, can I beat Craig, but also just like, what, like, you know, they, they might have rolled their black belt coach or whatever and like have like, okay, like, I have to use this much, I can use this much energy to hold him off, but like, you know, and then they roll you and then they're like, oh, wow, you know, it's definitely different. I like, like when you roll you, like, I like rolling high level people just to feel that. Okay. Yeah, but when this two is... high level people are rolling, that's different to when a high-level guy rolls with a seminar. Yeah. Because they're doing bizarre stuff. They're doing weird things, you know? They're... I think you get some people who then are like, they want to, they're defeated in, in that they're like, oh, I'm not going to, I can't beat him with normal jiu-jitsu. I've got to trick him. And that's what they probably do. You know, they're like, oh, I can't like knee cut pass. So I'm going to try to like do a cartwheel or something. And, you know, so, something that Craig's not used to and therefore. But I try work. to. To, to like, if they try to roll with me properly, that's why I try to give them a good position so they know like, hey, this is a joke. Yeah. This isn't a real round. You know, like I won't roll with strangers hard. Yeah. I have to like know the person to roll semi hard even because otherwise it feels like a competition. And I know if I roll hard with them, I might actually get very angry at time. You know what I mean? Like I might do something <laughs> that just you're like, probably <laughs> you, you got to keep it together, you know? That's the hardest part for sure. And they like kicking their head, freaking out, spazzing out, you know? Because people, they do that nonstop. Not everyone, not everyone. Some people are cool. Yeah. Did you find that was common during the camp? Or? I thought it was pretty good. Oh, I thought the camp was normal, normal, like normal yeah. group of people, you know? Yeah. What'd you think of the questions during QA? The questions were terrible, yeah. yeah questions it's why'd you do a q a lesson then i didn't know what to teach the last day you know okay sure i wanted to see i like to see what questions that people have as well though because you get a feel for uh what type of people were there you know if every question's about buggy chokes and ezekiel chokes you're like all right we know who you are you know looking for a shortcut most of the time when i was rolling when i looked over you were teaching someone a buggy oh yeah they, that's what they asked for it's the same in um, Belgium. Because uh, most people will be like, the buggy doesn't work. And if someone tells me anything doesn't work, then I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to hit this on you, you know, like for a lot, for my own personal enjoyment, yeah. not for improving the technique <laughs> of the sport or being a positive influence on yeah. the seminar attendees. Most people just want to train to hit some submissions on their friends, you know, I think. I feel like the average person doesn't care that much. Yeah, that's fair enough. Should we talk about Submeta? Submeta, yes, yeah. We're on Submeta as of what, yesterday? Yes, I think it's, well, it's live now. So um, maybe we can talk about like, I suppose like for, at least from the way I see it, you know, we've got so, like, we've got so many people from our gym that travel halfway across the world to train at B Team. Already, already at a pretty good gym, I think. Some of, <laughs> some of those cowards go to newer. <laughs> But yeah, like, you know, um, this is, it's like, it's the place that people want to be. You know, people want to train at B team. And obviously most people from around the real world can't be there all the time. So it's, this is kind of like an online academy where you get to, it's kind of like you're in the, you're in the room, not just um, with, for, for your submitter for this anyway. It's like, you know, it's going to get a real insight into how everyone's 
how you guys are training. You get to see roles with you and the other members of the B team and, and guests and you know some more high profile roles they wouldn't normally get to see. Uh, what else you got you doing like a lot more narration? So probably like getting to see like your mindset, like what you're thinking. Um, yeah, what else have you got? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tons of narrated rolling footage and the, like you said, the rounds that we don't want to just give away for free, you know, like the YouTube yeah. channel is meant to represent the vibe of the gym, yep. I think, create get a bit of the atmosphere, but it doesn't show enough details for, I think, you know what I mean? We can't, we can't just putting, keep putting out full roles, you know, like yeah. the YouTube format, I don't think it's good for that. People don't have the attention span for that, but the people that watch the YouTube that are like, oh, they see a highlight reel of a role and they're like, I want to see how that actually went down, yeah. you know, or even some of the better roles. Like we don't want to just be giving out me and Nicky are killing each other for free on YouTube, you know? Yeah. We'll at least put that behind, we'll put those beatings <laughs> behind, behind the paywall. The paywall yeah. you know? <laughs> so it'll be like sort of behind the scenes stuff, classes, and a lot of Q&As, you know? Obviously today was a very intellectual Q&A uh, in Iceland, so yeah, along those lines, yeah. Yeah, so it's obviously different. Like I have a submitter page. Mine's like predominant, mine's predominantly built around courses. Um, and it's like so like kind of like structured on a topic where I've got like a structured course similar to like an, uh, an instructional that you'd make and like mine's got multiple ones of them yours because it's B team it's the whole team it kind of it makes more sense for you guys to sell instructionals as a separate thing and this is more like this is the B team and you get more like training footage and um and techniques and you know, that there are some you've put some technique like film techniques up oh, for as sure, well yeah. right um, clips as well ours is obviously priced cheaper because we have to take into account the burden of Ethan Krellenstein's content being on Submeta so it just it, you know balance <laughs> <laughs> balances out I think what are we doing twelve ninety five I think for a month you guys are twelve ninety nine or like under annual subscription it works out to be ten ninety nine or ten fifty nine or something per month so yeah ours will be yeah. more like uh like people that have patreons and stuff you know more targeted sort of behind the scenes stuff you know? it's pretty good. i mean that's what like i think um a lot of the time one of the best ways to learn you just want to watch like lots of rolling footage of your favorite favorite grappler you know oh. we always used to go on like master mg and i used to go on mg in action and just like didn't watch uh, you know it wasn't always like techniques is just like roles but obviously you're gonna have everything there so yeah oh yeah, i mean a lot of the footage i'll put up i might like sometimes i think narrating the whole role is kind of like it might be key moments in the role really go deep on one exchange yeah. uh, sometimes i think that's almost more beneficial like you sometimes you'd see comp footage like i'd watch comp footage breakdowns back in the day but there would be guys i can't remember the names of the channels but they would just deep dive on one single sequence yeah because it was so interesting so hard to figure out yeah, there's some interesting stuff up there already. Um, I think you had one on EBI rule set. I think it was, was it attacking? Oh, was it, was it my one? Yeah. Oh, I did, um, I did the uh, two most important things to know for EBI over time, I think. Yeah. The reverse hitchhiker and how to escape the body triangle on the underhook side. Yeah. So that's like an interesting look. That was like a standalone video that you, and you'll be filming quite a lot of them so the yeah, plan is yeah. to release like three or four maybe more possibly oh, videos sure. a week or whatever you can yeah it'll be more targeted like that more specific whereas like typically for an instructional you kind of film the whole thing like most of the time we're working on one or two things at yep. a time you know so to be mostly releasing the things I'm working on right now yep. rather than having to wait for a time to put that in a full instructional yeah I don't know what the other guys are doing on there. Nicky Rod's probably speaking caveman on there, so it'll be, uh, it'll be entertaining. You'll get good technique. You won't know what any of it's called. Um, Nicky Ryan. And so you've started at the end of class doing discuss. Like, uh, you get everyone around. Anyone got questions? I think we, uh, I was chatting to Seth, but you guys will be, like, maybe doing that on particular topics as well. So it'll be something that someone can search, like, you know, uh, high step passing Q&A. You know, and you'll have like a Q and A on high step pass, and people will ask different questions and and so on. And I think like probably that's one of the things you know we're talking about 
New Wave versus um, B Team, but I think you guys are a bit more like, from what I understand, it's a bit more like collective, like you're all growing, like you're taking inspiration a bit from everywhere, whereas New Wave is a bit more top down. For you know? sure, yeah, yeah, John's the, the guru, he's the only one. Last time I got a tattoo, I was crying nonstop. It dragged the tattoo out for maybe seven, eight hours. I needed something to ease the soreness this time. We got stuck into the New Mood cannabis product. This time we went the Bubba Kush. And so far I've had multiple naps during this one. I barely feel a thing. Mood provides federally legal Delta 8 and Delta 9 products. They have uh, vapes, pre-rolls, gummies, and bud as well. Euphoric, energized, or chill? Choose the mood that's right for you. Order your THC products from Mood today. And for 20% off your first order and free gummies, go to hallowmood.com and use the promo code F Craig Jones. That's hallowmood.com. Promo code F Craig Jones for twenty percent off your first order and free gummies. Which is very interesting. It's like obviously a different, two different takes, like the Russian army versus the U.S. army. That's true. Apparently, that's the difference in command. Who are we, the Russians? <laughs> no, you're the, you're, I, I sort of actually. I don't, I don't really know, but I've heard that like. Hopefully, new wave becomes it's Ukraine. Then. Some more authoritarian. You know, like they have this real top-down structure, where it's like. Um, the US, for example, like each um, unit can act um, on their own accord to some degree. We still and have it, a little bit of that. Like if I look around the room and someone's doing something stupid, I'm like, hey, don't fucking practice that. You know, you're embarrassing <laughs> all of us here, you know? Which I mean, obviously might be the buggy joke, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not leading by example. Yeah. No, I think, I, I yeah, I definitely think it's... If you like, you want to draw from everyone in the room, you know, especially if you've got some high level guys who are doing different things. You know? Yeah, and we got lots of tourists coming in. So, obviously, when those high level tourists come in, like Joseph Chen, I will absolutely steal his moves, yeah. rename them, and teach them to you for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's he's, the, the he's method. He's doing good, hey? Yeah, Joseph's doing really good. He competes actually, I think, against Isaac tomorrow. Yep. Are they, oh, okay, they're, they're having an actual... So it's bit. basically Jesus versus Judas there, you know? Like, he's... <laughs> he's the Chinese Jesus taking one out for the team here, hopefully. <laughs> Joseph came down. He came... I've, I've, actually, I've rolled both of those guys in the last two years. Joseph came down maybe, like, six months, six to eight months ago. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. Yeah, Isaac's incredible wrestling and positional grappling, but I think he falls short when it comes to submissions. Joe's was pretty amazing all round. Definitely taking probably a, a big strength disadvantage in that match. Um, who else we got? We also got Kenta will be facing either Dante Leon or Cole Abate, which is, that's real interesting as well because Kenta took down JT Torres twice. He did a, had a good match with him. Kenta season. seems like he'd be hard to beat. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, like, he's like um, kind of short, stocky, just like. I mean, I don't, without having ever rolled with him, he he just seems like he might be someone that's hard to do stuff to. Yeah, he's got the same body as Nicky Ryan, but like he's just a bit with muscle mass and athleticism. You know, Is he, like, he'd be shorter than Nicky, right? Good question. Nicky's pretty. Yeah, they're both pretty similar. Similar yeah. size. He's a bit thicker than Nicky. Yeah. De definitely. I think definitely a bit takes his strength conditioning probably a bit more. Yeah. A bit more serious, I'd say. Yeah, Kenta's uh, Kenta's tough though. Super tough. And then we also, Kai's in there as well, but I'm not, I think Kai might be at reserve or something. And then we've got on that same, we've got um, Kamal. Kamal, yeah, He's, yeah. He'll be taking on Giancarlo, I think. Kamal has never forgiven me because I went to his gym in China and he's the coach there. And I probably shouldn't have done this, but I wrist locked him in front of his students <laughs> and he didn't want to tap in front of his students. So I was like slowly putting the wrist lock on until it was unbearable. And then he tapped. And then we kept rolling and then I wrist locked his other hand, but he tapped quick on that one. And he's, he's never forgiven me for this. <laughs> well, I mean, well, it's, he won't now that it's on the uh, camera. It's, yeah. yeah, it's public. I mean, that's probably, we, sh we released this after the event because his opponents, we don't want his opponents to know he's very limp-wristed, you know? 
He's got one move he's very good at, which I don't know, this is not going to be released before the event. So let's see. Maybe he'll get his John Wayne sweep. Oh, yeah. He's really good with that. If, like, if someone pressures into the... Like, I think from, from the John Wayne sweeps I felt, his is... He'll probably get that on... Because uh, it's Carlo. around Robin, so he'll probably face Khabib's team. I imagine those guys are force half guard. You don't reckon Giancarlo will? Giancarlo will, yeah. Yeah, true, true. He's a big man. Like, he'll be he's hard to huge. move. But... That's the crazy thing with the new wave guys right now. It's like, they're massive. Like, Big Dan, huge. Luke Griffiths, huge. Giancarlo looks like fucking... They were, it's like a group of 80s action movie stars, you know what I mean? It's definitely a smart idea to try to build up athletes at the heaviest weight division because most people are not as good. Oh, yeah, I mean, weight. If, you, if you... If you can get some heavyweights and make them technical, that's already... But, I mean, if you're an athletic, large person, you're going to do a real sport, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, imagine, like, what are you going to be like? Oh, listen, I'm, I could be in the NFL, but I love jiu-jitsu, you know? Like, you're yeah. going to pick. What are you going to pick? It's the reason, like, UFC heavyweights and stuff are generally, you know, the tight, like, Volkanovski's division stuff, because what else could he be but a jockey or something, you know? Like, stuff for him. <laughs> <laughs> Making more friends? <laughs> <laughs> no, he loves to laugh. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. The, the heavier guys, like, it's like... They're doing real sports, you know, like... We've got a few of that. In Australia, I feel like the 70... like Sorry, the Asian trials, the 77 kilo division's going to be pretty hard. And there's a few people from 66 that are going up to 77. I just think they're crazy. I look at the... Like, 66 is a much weaker division than 77. Yeah. Yeah, because, no, yeah, that's almost, it's almost too light for the average guy, you know, like... 77, though, I feel like Joseph's beatable, but I don't think anyone's better than it. You know what I mean? It's weird sometimes within the... Obviously, if you win within the rule set, but then it's like, in terms of people I've trained with, for that level of experience, I'm just like, I've, it's really hard to find anyone like that, you know? Joseph, I can't remember when I first... He must have been in Australia. He's like, oh, like... He sent me a message. He's like, oh, I messaged you on Instagram ages ago, and I, <laughs> I looked it up, and he sent me a message... He would have been like 15 or something. He's asking me about leg locks and I just left him on red. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, Might that's have been my chance to get him to Australia. He yeah, that's been... the type of guy he is, eh? He <laughs> leaves people on red all the time, eh? Rude to people Only in you. Q&A, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I messaged you. left me on red when I was talking shit because our guy beat your guy at the 10th Planet thing. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're like, well, you want me to talk shit about my own guy? I'm not going to do Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. Joseph, yeah, Joseph. I, th I feel like he just doesn't compete too much, you know? Some guys are really talented. They just don't compete that much. He's doing the Aiga because I think his sponsor, uh, Al Leon, wanted to, wanted to put a team together. And it's obviously like, hey, Joseph, you're in the team, you know? But generally speaking, he's not competing a ton he doesn't even want to live in America full time like he, he's got he's a 12 year old with a already understands a work life balance you know like he's pretty comfortable is he yeah okay where does he has he come from a good family or something or? good question he's a mystery you know he's out there in Shanghai I don't know what he's been up to you know, I don't know. <laughs> his sponsor helps him travel the world and train and stuff so he's, he trained with you guys for like three months or something or Good and did he, and he, was he just he spent about nine months total time with us he does some stints yeah we have a bunch of guys that come in and do stints we get like some Swedish guys uh, we all people from all over the world come in yeah. and do some stints together that's what that's what we might use so obviously you got donated a hundred thousand dollars from an anonymous source <laughs> we've also been donated a hundred so we might actually use that because obviously we could do whatever we want with it we might use that to try to buy a house and set it up for these guys to come down. Yep. Crazy, you can buy a house. Can you buy a house? Oh, no, no, down? we'd have to put money into it, but it would obviously help oh, like a lot, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Yeah. 100K, no, not in Austin, but definitely in some parts of America, get a house for 100K. But who's gonna clean it? Probably the guy behind the camera, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't know, we'll probably, uh, we'll, 
I thought about because I, I thought of like something I might do. I was like, oh, maybe I can just like pay for accommodation for people doing trials and stuff. But and then I was like, but then if they if I pay for the room and then they go and like wreck it and it's under my, you know, and yeah, you're like, liable, you get, right? yeah, you're liable. So I'm like, maybe I'll, I'll probably like end up using. I've got like still a little bit like fifty something, fifty thousand Australian. Oh, for money left. Yeah. I think I'll probably like put it towards accommodation of people who are doing trials, um, either these trials or next trials or something. You used your money very fairly across the board. I don't think we're using our money like that. You know, I'm absolutely biased playing favorites, you know, use it to punish people. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on who it is, you know, if they're like, hey, can I come stay in the house? I'll be like, I'll do what you do, leave them on red, you know, what you did to Joseph Chan. <laughs> yeah but yeah the 100k is crazy don't know we're gonna feel i think we're gonna use it to film a show but here's here's the tricky thing i know this is gonna be you, you'll be very careful about what you say here but it's like you you have to kind of do everything uh equally across the genders you know like if you if i leave the house i'm gonna have people stay but the last thing i wanted to do is have this turn into a Lloyd Urban House situation where some crazy shit goes down if I got male and female athletes staying together. It's hard enough to run a know, gym yeah. with yeah. both genders in there, you know? It's just fucking crazy shit goes down, you know? So, like, if I were to, we were to set up a house, I feel like we'd have to do it, hey, during this time's all men, during this time's all women, you know? Like, that'd be a fucking nightmare to manage sending them in there together. I'm not going to say anything here. I'm just going to leave you. <laughs> <laughs> have you been watching the uh, Women's World Cup? No, because I've been here in the Iceland doing a training camp. Ah, all right, all right. Not supporting your country. Here. <laughs> nah, yeah, I don't know. I haven't watched it, no, but yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I don't watch soccer at all to begin with, eh? Um, you would have had to... Did you have to watch a lot of sports you hated when you were coming up as a physiotherapist did you have to go work for teams and stuff I mean, for Australian rules football teams I had to do that for a while that was a hard that was the worst actually you hated it definitely by the end of, I mean at first I was like this is good it's funny because it was like really good work experience because you actually when you're studying physiotherapy like you're you don't really get to see real patients so you can work for like a football team and you're there like when people get injured and you got to like there's no one else around to diagnose it so at least you can like try and then you can like you're still learning but you can try and then you send it off to the physio and it's kind of like was I right or was I was I wrong um, why does every Australian want to be a physiotherapist though? I don't know what it seems like a good idea I think because when you're young like if you're like 15 you get injured you probably go and see a physio and it's like pretty easy. You're like, oh, these, these guys just like work with sports people, you know, seem to do okay financially, which I don't think it's actually that good financially. But um, so they're like, oh, it's like physiotherapy is just sports. But then when you actually get into it, you're like, oh, it's like 90% old people with, you know, like back <laughs> pain. And you gotta, most you of it's actually not even private practice. Like, what you've seen is probably the private practice physiotherapist. Like you go in because you've got an injury. Most physiotherapy is like someone's had a stroke or they've just had like a hip replacement or something and you need to get them out of bed. You work at the hospital and you just got to get them moving again to the point where they can get out of the hospital. Yeah, that's the first, nice. <laughs> the first day of my first placement. It's like, um, that was, and I, I got put on the place like my best friend in the course it's kind of like a joke to like you a little bit um but we got we've managed to like get our placement at the same place together and then like our first day we're walking around and then this at the hospital and then this um lady with dementia just did a, a shit right on the floor in front of us and our supervisor's there like talking to us and we're just looking at each other trying not to, <laughs> to laugh Sorry? Did you have to clean it up? No, no, no. The nurse did that. <laughs> no, just like, it was a bit of a shock. I was like, oh, this is, this is what we do now. Oh, that's rough, eh? Yeah. But that's normal. That's just like every day something like that would happen. 
yeah, I couldn't imagine. I don't have the patience for people to do a job like that, you know? I don't know how people do it. I don't know how you're a jiu-jitsu coach, to be honest. Well, I mean, the things, man, you know what? You'll be able to clarify this with me. What is it with people wearing injuries like a badge of honor and being like, wanting to say like, oh, I'm fucking more injured than you are. You know, it's so bizarre. Or they like want to be injured. They want, like, say, I remember even an absolute guys would come up to you and ask you about injuries. Like they want you to say they're injured or something, you know? They don't want to hear, no, nah, you'll be fine. Just train around. I don't know. <laughs> they want to be injured I don't know do you, do you think so in a weird way like they want to be like they want the pain they're experiencing they want you to be able to say no that's bad you know like I think they maybe want validation yeah. like it's very a strange trivial. yeah this is what I want to pick your brain about most, most injury I mean you just look at the Meow brothers right like tell me an injury they haven't had that they're still training with yeah they're fine hey <laughs> Don't know if they're fine, but <laughs> at least long term. But yeah, it's kind of that's like to, you know your brain can allow you to work around injuries. You know, I'm not saying that you should, but yeah. Well, that's one thing, right? Working around an injury, those guys are were letting shit break almost like yeah, as a badge of honor, you know. But you don't see that as much now. True, true. You, like I used to think footlocks, like I basically, you know, I basically just like, yeah, like I think you, you would have come through at the same time. Like you're watching all the worlds and like Huffa Mendes and Guy and the Meows and I was like, oh, and even Leandro. It's like, you just don't tap to, I, I, I never had that mindset, but I was like, oh, they're, they're not tapping to footlocks. So I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to bother doing straight foot locks or toe holds because people just might not tap to them. And I don't see that as much now. Yeah, I think probably heel hooks probably changed that because Brazilians used to say don't tap to heel hooks either and shit, you know? Yeah, they like seem to. Any yeah. leg attack, you know? But yeah, you, I guess heel hooks changed that. It scared me when you'd see like spiral fractures when, in outside heel hooks. Those are the ones that I'm yeah. like, Yeah, that's what's, bad. What's wrong with these people there? Eh? It's bad because you don't. You look at it and you're like, what, "What's the mechanics there that are different to? Like, do you know anything different about those heel hooks that just, oh, they're obviously outside heel hook? But usually, the thing is, usually with an outside heel hook, and you're you're actually risking a bit less. It's usually like your ankle, possibly LCL. Yeah, but it's, but really it's usually a lot worse. Like, usually when it's an inside heel hook, it's like a worse ankle, like like the inside ligaments of your ankle or your medial ligament, possibly ACL. Like worse injuries, but then you've just got this more rare but possible chance of an outside heel hook just shattering your whole shin. If that shatters your whole shin... It's terrible, it's a horrible injury. Young yeah. and in healthy shape, will they test your bone density and see if there's any... Possibly. Something like that, eh? I don't know if they would just from one injury. Usually it's like people who have had multiple fractures they start going well why is this person like you know fracturing so often and that's when they'll usually look at bone density some people are super fragile hey like you'll see them get put in an, any form of footlock and it just pops straight away you're the opposite I mean mine are stretched out now from just allowing them to go a bit far day by day you know you need a good poker face bluff them out of it that's all it is I think all right, we've got to get to your recovery. All right, stretching, useful or not useful? For what? For jiu-jitsu. Useful. And all forms of stretching for jiu-jitsu, stretching all body parts. It's, stretching is useful for performance, not useful, uh, partially useful for injury prevention. Why do you okay. say partially? Uh, because it can be worse and it can be better. Like the more range... A joint has the less stable it is right so like if something moves a lot it's harder to keep it the structure of it tight does, does that make sense yeah like hyper mobility right sort of not even just hyper yeah i mean just more mobility right um uh just think of like your shoulder you know like does a whole like your shoulder moves outwards forwards it rotates it does it's like one of the most mobile joints in the body 
also much more prone than other joints to dislocating because of that. Because like, how do you have a structure that moves so much, but is also stable? If you wanted it really stable, it would like be locked in, right? And then it can't move much. If you want it to be able to move a lot, it's got to be a loose That's why structure. bodybuilders can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, uh, yeah. But, yeah. Um, so in a lot of sport, or a lot of the time people say like getting more flexible or having more range of motion can be a, a liability for injury. Um, but at the same time, you might like, you know, having flexible hips and hamstrings will mean your back has to bend less if you're getting stacked. You know, like you think about, you know, those, if you would have seen people that hurt their neck getting stacked, those real stiff people, and they've gotten stacked, and it's like they yeah. get their neck jams up before anything else touches the mat. Like, obviously, that doesn't happen to me really because I, I fold pretty well. Obviously, like something else could injure, but like for my neck, that's. Um, Good. So like it can be good. I think a problem is that you get more flexible and then you you start using it. You're like, oh, okay, I'm flexible, so I'll put my cells in these spots, which can be good for performance sometimes, but it is probably not good to be sitting there getting balled up and squashed over and over again. Yeah, that, yeah. I don't know how your back survives that, eh? Um, I just, yeah, I try not to do it under load. I try to do it on my own. I feel like I get flexibility from playing guard retention with people that are shit at passing that. You know, I just sure. let them stretch my legs out. Yeah. Feels like resistant stretching. Yeah. So stretching for that. So stretching's a yes or a no. Yeah. Well, when you go on Instagram and you see crazy people, because obviously jujitsu people recommend all the wildest shit, like doing yoga every day and stuff. Like it's the fitness industry. Yeah. 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 But we overlap with that, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but you don't do any lifting either. No. So no lifting. How often do you stretch? Well, I don't really stretch anymore. So you got. So once you achieve the flexibility, you don't need to stretch anymore. I mean, only because I'm not really competing. So, I, like, I'm, I was doing it for performance. Um, now I can't be bothered. <laughs> but, you're, but your flexibility. Is I get. Though. Yeah, it stays for the most part as long as you're using it. Uh, strength training actually does. Um, like strengthening is probably one thing that's been shown to reduce the risk of injury. But I also think like you can make a broad statement like that or you can look at it a bit more, you know, like you can take a lens to that. Like I'm, I feel pretty strong, especially isometrically. Like I think people like I'm pretty good at not letting my joints suddenly get like put into bad spots, which is like what having more strength means you're, you're going to be better at just like when required you can you know, activate the muscles required to just keep the joint stable and not let it get injured. I feel like I've got that already. I'm naturally pretty, pretty big, so I don't need to do for for injury prevention. I don't really feel the need to do strength training. But for for a more lean person, it's probably a good idea. You definitely see like some like skinny people that get injured a lot in jiu-jitsu. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. And then you're a big cold plunge guy. <laughs> no, definitely not. No. <laughs> is all right. So I feel like we have to deal with all these weird people suggesting things to you in jiu-jitsu because of the Joe Rogan podcast. You know, like yeah, recovery, like sauna, cold plunge. He's trying to make it so Joe Rogan never asks me to get on. Yeah. <laughs> so I just mean that's what you. I don't think the, he's going to ask me to get on. You go into the gym every day. That's what uh -oh. they're, they're talking about. You know, all those sort of out the gate sort of recovery. yeah but people like, like you know people want there to be things that you know like it's not a maybe it's not a nice thing to just think, like I think people you know like if you just go like, oh yeah like I'm just slowly aging and it's not you know apart from just keeping generally healthy doing strength training and like keeping fit and eating a you know balanced diet um, you know which is probably I think a lot of these people that promote those things don't do the the main things which is that but um yeah so people just want there to be some secret you know stem cells oh, i'm never gonna get arthritis now or um, stem cells oh. bullshit <laughs> he's saying that's the set yeah <laughs> i don't think the technology is quite there yet yeah yeah yes. one day one day maybe maybe you got the the good stuff the good right? stuff maybe you got the stuff that's right on the cutting edge that hasn't been proven yet but it's i remember because yeah. i got <laughs> 
I remember from some dodgy doctor in Melbourne, he gave me PRP. PRP, yeah. And I remember being like, like from just him blindly injecting randomly into my Not body. even with ultrasound or no anything. Ultrasound. No, 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 just like, <laughs> just like I'm the, getting the right spot. A yeah. needle this fucking big. And I was like, my shoulder feels way worse than it did before that. Yeah. Because I was like, I'd torn part of my labrum or something. You tore it, actually. <laughs> you <laughs> injured me. But you injured my rib, remember, so. And you probably injured me more than I've injured you. No way. You've broken me way too many times, hey. You've had to get stitches because of you from the same dodgy doctor, you know. He was good at stitches, though. But yeah, PRP, bullshit, right? I, I haven't looked, to be honest, I'm not like reading up on the latest stuff but as of about four years ago yeah it was bullshit maybe there's some new research showing otherwise but but generally speaking like if you were to be injured now most treatments just re-strengthening the weakened area like not any crazy out like people always tell me all the time they're like oh you're crazy you don't get a massage every week and i'm like a massage what the fuck's a massage gonna do <laughs> feels good yeah that's yeah. it right yeah um yeah basically pretty much yeah well, even i what, mean it yeah what about Massage, a, acupuncture you know like all that sort of stuff it's like i feel like it's things people say to have something interesting to say if yeah, people want you know they want something to do something to the tissue yeah you know, they want to like a better speed it up people. but yeah i mean you because you know, we've evolved to be pretty good at healing the better but the, at least like pretty good you know and then if you just like put the you know you've got scar tissue it's going to come in and kind of glue the the um, injured bits together and you need to like you do need to move like just pure rest is bad for, for most things like when you move the scar tissue like aligns you know there's collagen and it has to like align to some degree with the tensile forces that it's gonna that the normal ligament's gonna or whatever it is you've injured is gonna experience so like that's why doing rehab just basically like solidifies that and you can also sometimes get the general structure around like you know if you get more stronger muscles around the area you might be less likely to re do the injury that you did before but, yeah yeah right because like i've never never <clears throat> had any help from any of these things what are the other machines people give you is it if you believe that would help they might but that's the thing you know but how could you yeah. believe it when it's just retarded people telling you to do it, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, ultrasounds definitely. Actually, ultrasounds got weirdly got some evidence for like bone healing, but for like ligament healing, no. What, so in terms of, what, what is it that makes certain people be able to operate without ACLs and is that just the, the strength of their surrounding muscle? The ACLs are a weird one because it's like within the joint and so it stops your you know, your knee sits on this, like your thigh bone sits on, on your tibia like this and it can like slide like this. Um, so it is actually something that given good movement and like good strong muscles around it that are like supporting the joint and probably a bit of your, you know, not everyone, not every knee actually looks just like people don't look the same. Not every knee actually looks the same. Some might be more likely to still be stable despite the ACL being gone. Um, so for, for those people who do rehab they might not need surgery and some people they get it torn and they do all the exercises they want and it's still unstable is it, is it more heading in the direction of people attempting rehab only first now than operate straight away or it seems to be heading more towards that I think the recurrence rate if you do your ACL and you're under 19 years old the recurrence rate's very high oh, like yeah. 80% or something like that. I can't remember the exact it's like very likely you're going to do it again. It's pretty crazy. So like, it's that, but that's probably like a gen, like those people that probably predisposed, like it's happened early because they were just, it was going to happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you're 30 and you tear your ACL, you probably m move in a way that is generally protective of it and you're just unlucky and you're probably more likely to cope with, but still, uh, you know, do your ACL and you want to keep wrestling and doing like pivoting and stuff, you, it's got to be back to very good function. Oh, really? Cause Nick, just like, you can just like play guard and it's a bit easier, but like some of the, some of the higher, like wrestling, I think is a lot harder, but you still, you may, maybe for some people it grows back. Yeah. That's crazy. It grows back. Yeah. 
that's wild. What's wild to me is people can not have an ACL and not know it, but they yeah. could have had a torn and they just, yeah. they never even, it's wild that people, someone will have an injury and they act like they're about to die. Someone else will have the same injury and not know they're actually injured. Yeah. Guys, obviously some of the smartest, most intelligent people in the world listen to this podcast, as well as jujitsu and MMA fans. And that's why Nikolai has contacted me because he's reaching out for software engineers and just generally technical people that are interested in getting involved in his startup called Deep News. Deep News will use AI technology to cover the news in real time. Should take, it'll have a news story up within 20 minutes. And these topics could be anything from politics, sports, the usual stuff you would uh, be on Reddit or Twitter reading into. But this will actually monitor articles from uh, important figures in those fields and update your own sort of personalized machine-based uh, newspaper. If that's something you're interested in, I want you to check out deepnftvalue.com forward slash news. And if you also want to contact uh, Nikolai directly, I want you guys to reach out to him on Twitter and it'll be twitter.com forward slash Ivan, I-V-A-N underscore B-E-Z-D-O-M-N-Y. So again, guys, if you're a uh, software engineer or technical person interested in getting involved in the AI field, this is your man to contact. Nicky Ryan, like he had, uh, he had his meniscus stitched and it failed. So then the surgeon cut out like 95% of that's bad long long term right would you always suggest people generally get that one stitched back up rather than removed if you're young yeah they try usually try to stitch it up because it's at least supposed to i mean once you take it out you can't put it back and there's uh, meniscus is meniscus is a funny one because it's like probably the least of your worries in terms of time out you know like if you tear your fully rupture your LCL, or ACL, or even MCL, you'll be out for a longer time than a meniscus tear where they can just cleave it, you know. But long term, it's more likely to get arthritis than any of the others. I talk to so many people that are always like, bro, we're like five to 10 years away from them regrowing meniscus, you know. And I'm always like, oh, <laughs> I guess so. That'll be down in Mexico with some stem cell facilities, right, you know. I, feel, I see why people make so much money off the health industry because everyone wants a, uh, some wild cure. I feel like they want to be able to tell their friends about it more than they want to actually have the cure done to them. You know, like it's a cool thing to talk about. But you don't, you don't think there's anything wild out there now like that? Maybe. I mean, it's, look, it's not like I'm not like going and oh, I'm going to like conferences. To yeah, I'm not going to conferences and seeing what the latest like evidence is behind these so these days so like there could be i'm sure like without a doubt people are getting better at closer to those things but i think it's just very complex and it's not something that's easy for like you've got to like to regrow a meniscus it seems seems like it's like it sounds easy but there's obviously a lot to doing that yeah so i don't think yet so there will be if you if five you... years Five years. <laughs> no. Yeah, put its arm on. It's like nuclear <laughs> nuclear fusion, right? It's always five years away, ten years away. We so if you were to take any serious injury, there'd be no wild treatment you'd try. It's a bit wild serious. treatment. I'm not saying broken neck. I'm saying you injure your shoulder or anything like that. There'd be no. I mean, I think people get desperate if nothing else works. Yeah. Then you try. You try. I mean, if, you, if you're actually like, let's say you're actually in pain like a lot of pain and like you've done all your rehab you're supposed to do and it's not working like that's probably when people are like I can't or when they go like I can't I've tried all the things I've been told to do and I'm still in pain that they start looking for you know unusual things unusual things to try yeah experimental <laughs> so I'm at the point where like if my body breaks down I'm just going to be like you know what well let's call it a day you know but what if it doesn't go away the pain well, I, I just mean I'll stop training, you know? I'll be like, fuck it, you know? Yeah. We'll go jogging. Maybe what, what if you still sore? Still sore? Well, I'll just get addicted to painkillers or something. <laughs> They've already solved that problem, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. 
if someone, uh, if someone, uh, that's why I give people bad positions in the seminar because I'm like, fuck, someone break your day so I can just have a vacation for a while, you know. You want to have time off? <laughs> yeah, you can just do that. Yeah, I yeah. know. No, there's too many good opportunities, you know. Taking on old MMA fighters, that's the, that's the business. When do you reckon you're done? Good question. Doing ADCC? I don't know if I'll do ADCC, you know. It's a tough one, eh? You definitely should. It's a lot of work, you know. It's a big commitment of time. Yeah. <laughs> the, I'll tell you what, the only reason I want to do it is because you've done ADCC how many times? Four. And I've done it four times. Yeah. So I want to just remind you that I am in, will be in the five-timers club, you know. But then you might just surprise and show up for <laughs> a fifth one. <laughs> Give me an invite for the 99, over 99 division. Over 99, yeah. Just do the trials for over 99. Maybe. Could you, would, how much would someone have to pay you to take a grappling match today? How so much? We'll finish this because obviously you're you tens of millions of dollars in the bank account now. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll finish this. I, yeah, I would, nah, I don't know. I mean, if it was a, a lot of money, I'm sure. But There'd be certain names know. though, right? Like if it was like Lucas Lepre or something. He's already beaten me. JT Torres. He's beaten me three times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody yeah. beats us four times, though. True. No, it was uh, Will Diaz. <laughs> he, got, he beat me seven times, and then I got him <laughs> the last two. Do you, would you rather beat someone seven times and then have the last two, or would you rather be the other way around? I'm pretty happy having the last two. It feels like a, it was like a sign of progress. You know? yeah. It was like I'd lose. Uh, this is a, an Australian guy. Um, well, I think like, I first fought him in, at Brown Belt. Um, and he beat me by submission and then maybe like four points or something, then two points, then advantage, then referee's decision like three times in a row. And then I got the last two by like submission and and um, points or something. But yeah, so I was like, it was nice to see like a... Maybe he was into that week. I think he might have been actually, but <laughs> we'll go with it. <laughs> that's always the token eh? like I swear to god I love it doesn't that? matter don't ruin my narrative <laughs> the funniest shit is always how people take a loss on Instagram or Facebook or something you know like there's people we've all been guilty of that yeah. Like, you know? yeah I learned yeah. very quick though I remember I lost to Marilla and I said hey the guys didn't tell me the rules I didn't yeah. know the rules so they didn't tell me that the second penalty was two points and I was like oh, I'll just fucking eat a penalty right now stall it out <clears throat> but people from all levels even the most amateur guys that no one cares about the event they're in will write this novel of all the things going on in their life and stuff yeah. up until multiple time black belt Brazilian world champions you know they'll have the same <laughs> uh, novels explaining the loss yeah I mean I think people just like they want to they want to believe that you know they're at this level and if, 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 if something like happens that they contends with that that's like oh I still am at that level this just you know that got in the way yeah, yeah but no one cares hey like no one no one actually cares, cares. Yeah. for the most part yeah no one cares yeah. unless the injury occurs weirdly in the match or something you know it's like hey yeah. you, you showed up shut up yeah. you know that's why I see it anyway but that's a good a good one to answer but you didn't put a price on it so we'll say Lachlan will compete for $500 in any local super fight event in Australia Five hundred dollars, please. If you subscribe to Submatter, he will compete for you. Okay? <laughs> Thank you for listening to the El Segundo podcast. Don't forget, fuck cry Jones. <laughs>